In this video, we're going to consider the sum of this infinite series. In other words, we're going to try and work out what you get if you add all these terms together. Now, the clue is in the name. It's an infinite series versus a finite series. So these terms carry on indefinitely. We're imagining that they never stop. So it might seem counterintuitive at first, if you're not used to these, that you can add up infinitely many numbers and get a finite answer. You would think the answer would just be infinity. But if you think about the individual terms, they're actually getting smaller. So if you're adding up infinitely many terms, but the terms are getting smaller fast enough, then theoretically you could imagine that even though you're adding up infinitely many of them, that totals to some finite number. And that's called the limit and it's called a convergent series. So in addition to using some particular techniques within this uh, video to solve this particular problem, if you're new to infinite series, then hopefully you'll also learn some general principles about how you might go about a problem like this. And the technique we're gonna to use to solve this is actually quite common in infinite series. So this approach might work for other problems as well. Okay, so the first thing to deal with here is notice that there's a pattern here in the term. So the first term looks a little different because it's not presented as a fraction. The other terms have got a pattern. Notice as well that they're using the factorial symbol. If you're not used to factorials or just as a reminder, uh, let's just quickly go through that. So something like five factorial, remember that just means multiply five to all the numbers less than five. So five times four times three times two times one. So that's just what we mean by the factorial uh, notation. The other thing we want to consider here before we kind of properly get going is what exactly is the pattern that's going on here. To try and figure out and write down formally that pattern, we need to consider that these are terms one, two, three, four, etc. In other words, to give them a number. So this is the first term, the second term, the third term and the fourth term. And if I call these term numbers n, then we want a method that associates the n value, the term of the series, with the actual numbers in that term. So this is where we can figure out the pattern. The first term, like I say, is not a great example, but it does fall into the pattern later on, as you'll see. But if you pick out these ones, you can see that the numerator of the fraction is just two times the n number. So we can say that part of our um, term definition is going to be 2n and that's on the numerator. The denominator is just this number plus 1 inside a factorial. So this is 3 plus 1 factorial. This is 4 plus 1 factorial. So in general that's going to be n plus 1 factorial. So that's how we define each term and we can sometimes uh, call that something like un to represent the nth term in the series. So that allows us then, oh, and by the way, just check that that works for this one, because this one is presented a little differently. So when n is one, you would get two, let's just quickly work this out. When n is one, you would get two times one on the uh, numerator, one plus one, which is two factorial on the denominator. So it's two divided by two factorial, which is two times one, which is just two. So it's two over two, so that is just one, which is what we want it to be. So in other words, this does work for all of the terms, not only for the ones presented as a fraction. Okay, so moving on from there, that allows us then to write this series using sigma notation. So remember, sigma just means add things up. So we're adding up all these 2n over n plus one factorials, and we're gonna let the n values run from one which is our first value, all the way to infinity. Because remember, this carries on indefinitely. So that's basically a compact algebraic way to write the summation of this infinite series. Okay, so what does that allow us to then do? Well, we can now, for example, simplify this. The two comes in front of the sigma sign. You don't have to do that, but it's quite a neat way of just making it as simple as you can. So if I pull the, the two through like that, and that's just because that, who's not really playing any part in the formation of the, the series, it's just multiplying every term by two. So we could just pull that out the front, almost like a common factor, well it is a common factor. And then that just leaves us with n over n plus one factorial. So that's quite a common thing in infinite series. If you've got an opportunity to pull out a common factor, just do it because it's gonna make things a little easier with the algebra. So what about this guy here? Well, it looks pretty weird and I'm actually gonna pull in a result from um, factorials for this result to work. 
And this will seem a little bit weird at first, but there's a result that says that n over n plus 1 factorial is equal to 1 over n factorial minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Now that result you'll just need to trust me about. I'm not going to prove that result, but I am going to link to a video above that shows where that result comes from. Just a, a short video that demonstrates how to actually go about proving that result. But the, what that allows us to do is to now say, well, our series is going to be two times the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, no longer of this, but instead replacing it with this here. So 1 over n factorial minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Now we're going to do a little bit of work um, with how sigma ba sigmas basically uh, work um, just by substituting in some terms. Because remember, the sigma notation is a shorthand for, you know, letting n be 1 and then n be 2 and then n be 3 just to generate all of the terms. But we're generating different terms now because whereas it started off like this, we're going to change the definition of each term to this. And that's going to be really the key to solving this problem. So the 2 we can just leave in front and I'm just going to open a bracket here. So if you now imagine that n is 1, you would get 1 over 1 factorial. 1 factorial is just 1, so it's 1 over 1, which is just 1. So that one I'm going to write as a 1. The others I'm just going to keep the factorial in. So when n is uh, 2, sorry, for the next term we then get 1 over 1 plus 1. So that's 1 over 2 factorial. So 1 over 2 factorial. So that's for n equals 1. When n is then 2, we get 1 over 2 factorial. This is positive, remember, so it's going to be plus 1 over 2 factorial minus 1 over 2 plus 1 factorial, which is 3 factorial. So it's 1 over 3 factorial. So you can see a pattern emerging already. When n is 3, we get 1 over 3 factorial. So it's plus 1 over 3 factorial minus 1 over 3 plus 1, which is 4. So it's 1 over 4 factorial. That would just carry on indefinitely. You can see that these are kind of getting paired up, 1 plus and 1 minus. So if we carry that all the way to the nth term, n is not enough. We want to go all the way to infinity, but for the time being, let's just consider the nth term. We already know the nth term. It's this guy here. So that would carry on all the way to 1 over n factorial minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. But this would carry on and the next term would be 1 over n plus 1 factorial minus 1 over n plus 2 factorial and that this carries on. But we're just going to imagine that carrying on and stop there because we can clearly see now that there's something happening here. This is called a telescoping series and it's basically when you write the terms in such a way that they start to cancel. So minus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial, they're just going to cancel because there's one positive and one negative. Same with those guys, same with this guy in the next term. Everything's going to cancel actually apart from this very last term. And let's just imagine we're only working up to n terms now. So this guy would cancel and then the cancellation would carry on. But let's just for a moment consider only going to n terms. That would then tell us, so let me just actually take the equals out. So let's imagine we're stopping at n terms, okay? That would give us 2 times 1, everything else cancels and then we stop here and we get minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. So if you knew how many terms you wanted, like if you knew the n value, you could plug that in there and then you could work out the sum of that series. Now that's not quite good enough for us because we know that our n value never stops, it goes on forever. So that's where we've got to introduce the idea of a limit. So limits are an important concept in mathematics. We don't have time in this video to go through limits. So if you're not familiar with limits, maybe check out another video or an online resource to figure out what they are. Otherwise, just follow along. But limits are in themselves a big uh, concept. So a limit would allow us to evaluate what is going to happen here as n does carry on towards infinity. So the way that we write that, we just say that we're going to take the limit. We just use this uh, lim notation. So limit as n tends to infinity of this thing here. Let me just put this all in a bracket. So basically all that kind of means is that we're just imagining what is going to happen when n does tend towards infinity. So one thing we can do with limits, if you've got multiple terms, you can split the limit. So let's just take this sta stage by stage to be clear. So this is going to be the limit as n tends to infinity. Multiplying out this internal round bracket, 2 times 1 is obviously 2. I'll keep the square bracket. So it's going to be 2 for 2 times 1. 2 times that fraction is just going to be 2 over n plus 1 factorial, like this. 
And the way the limits work, you can apply them individually if you've got multiple terms in a bracket. So the limit as n tends to infinity of two, I'm just gonna write that as a separate term. So the limit as n tends towards infinity of two minus the limit as n tends towards infinity of this term here. So two over n plus one factorial. Now notice that we're taking a limit here as n tends to infinity of just the number two. The number two doesn't have any n's in it, so it doesn't matter what n does. It can tend towards infinity, but that's not gonna affect the number two. So number two just stays as number two. This guy though, imagine n is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We can never get to infinity, like infinity is not a number, it's a concept. So but imagine n getting really, really big. This here, this fraction, is gonna get really, really small. In fact, as n gets super big, this fraction is gonna get closer and closer to zero. I mean, just imagine it, just start plugging numbers in there, you'll start to see they get pretty small pretty quickly. As n gets really big, this gets as close to zero as you want it to be. You can get infinitesimally close to zero by making n as big as you need it to be. So as n does get super big, this is just basically gonna to go to zero. It will never get to zero, but the concept of a limit allows us to imagine it getting super close to zero. So close that we may as well call it zero. So we say that that is just gonna be zero. Two minus zero, obviously, is just two. So that tells us that the final answer there, actually after all of that is just two. What does that mean? That means if you add up all of these guys and keep going, blah, 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 all the way forever, the answer is two. So the actual answer is great to find, but it's not as important maybe as some of the principles here. So the idea of a telescoping series, really, really common in infinite series. The concept of a limit, super important as well. The concept of making your nth term like this. This definitely is a trick. Like you needed to know that that little trick um, is gonna happen. You don't always need something like that. In this case, um, we did need to pull that in. So the other principles are gonna be quite general in a lot of infinite series problems. Something like this might come up from time to time, but it's just an added thing within this particular question. So the summation of that infinite series, final answer if you like is just two.